Hello again and welcome to Astroprint. Well, in this episode we're going to talk a little bit about the beginning stuff, some of the basics you need to do when it comes to 3D printing. And one of the first, most basic things you need to do when you're doing 3D printing, when you get filament, and you get a new printer or you have a used printer or whatever, the first thing you need to do is do temperature towers. Now people say, no you don't, just follow the instructions, but the instructions that have come with, with filament is often covering a large range of temperatures, such as uh, PLA says anything from 180 to 220 degrees. That's a large variation. So that will change based on your printer, that will change on your nozzle, that will change on your printer type, that will change on your printer model, that will change on the manufacturer, it will change on everything. It will even change on the type of filament you use, the color of filament you use, the manufacturer of the filament you use. So a temperature tower should be done for every manufacturer, let's say PLA, and you buy Overture PLA as an example, and from that one PLA you have five colors or six colors you choose from. For every color of that one manufacturer's filament, you always do a temperature tower because even the color of a filament, even though it's PLA and it's from the same manufacturer, the temperatures can change to get optimal printer settings based on that filament, just by color alone. So f for every new spool of filament you get that you've never used before, you've never done a temperature tower before, you should always do a temperature tower. Now I like this temperature tower that you see here because it's designed for PLA. I have my various temperatures listed out here. I have two angles of degree to test for overhangs. One is 35 degrees and one is 45 and I like that because the 45 degrees is steeper and most printers will do a 45 degree print angle without any issues. 35 is a little bit of a steeper angle and because of this you may not always get a good print at 35 degrees so I like using this one. To do a temperature tower is pretty simple and I'm going to do it in Cura because it is the slicer I prefer. First thing you need to do is set up your, bring in your model into Cura and you need to take down a pen and a paper. On a pen and paper list your temperature. So we have 190, 195, 200 and so on all the way to 230 with 5 degree increments. Now the reason why we list these down is we need to go in and tell the slicer that every time it reaches the next layer between the degrees that it needs to heat the nozzle to the next level. So we write them down in advance the temperatures and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to slice the model. And the reason why we're slicing the model is we want to find out the layers and the layer counts. So we have the layers done. We go into our preview mode. And in our preview mode, you see the various layers. So I'm going to slide this model over here so it's a little easier to see. Now, using my slider on the right hand side, I'm going to bring all the way down and I'm going to find the first layer. Now, at the very top layer here, we're at 190 finishes and the next layer is up it is layer 36. So at layer 36 my temperature is going to change from 190 to 195. Then at, so I write that down between 195 I write down 36 so I have it on, my, on a sheet of paper. Next I move up again and the next layer starts at 67. So I write 67 down between beside temperature 200 because at 67 I want the temperature to increase to 200 degrees because it's going to print this layer or this section at 200 degrees. Next one is at 98. I'm going to change my temperature to 205 and 98. At 129 I'm going to change it to 210. At 160, I'm going to change my temperature to 215, and so on up along. Just because you see the layer changing right here, you see the new layer starting to be built. So you repeat this process and you get the numbers all the way to the top of your piece. So the last temperature change that you will be actually be doing will, will be here at 253 where your temperature will change to from 225 to 230. Now once you have those written down, the next thing you need to do is go into Cura Extensions. So you go to Extensions, and you go to 
post-processing modify g-code. So in here we're going to add our script. So we're going to go to add a script, change it z, and we've gotten all of our our height settings and so on. We wrote them down. So we're going to use that what we wrote down. My first layer is at layer 34. I'm going to do a temperature change. So I'm going to do layer number. I'm sorry, yeah, 34. I'm going to change my temperature to 195. Add another change at Z. Change this from height to layer number. At 66, I'm going to change my temperature to 200. Now I'm just going to repeat the process, so I'm going to speed up this part of the video, and when I'm done, I'll jump back in and we'll explain what I've done. Okay. So I've added all my properties in there. Let's double, go back and double check to make sure we set a layer number and the layer height and the temperature. So layer number 195, layer number is set to 200, then we go to 205, 210, 215, 220, 225, and 230, and close. Now, as I said, we set the first temperature change to happen at layer 34. So we need to set the default settings of the printer and when it heats up and you start the print job, then it's going to set the printer temperature to the correct temperature. So we're going to start at 190 because the first layer is 190. So we start off at 190 degrees for the first temperature. And after that, as it goes through the various layers, it will actually start changing the temperature for you. What actually happens when I run slice here again, I'll minimize this out of the way. Every time your printer runs or you run this code, It'll start off at 190 because that's what you set the default and cure it to be. But once it reaches the top of this layer, which is layer uh, 35, at layer 36, or 34, sorry, at layer 36, it will actually start print heating up the, the nozzle to 195. And by the time it hits two or three layers up in the 195 range, it will be hot enough and it'll start printing at 195 degrees. And it will repeat the process for every la every layer shift you go through in each of these sections here. The temperature will be modified up five degrees. And when the when you export the job, the G code, and you print it in your printer, the print the, the temperatures will change. Now, 230 degrees is hot for PLA, so chances are you're going to have really bad prints at this level. The things you want to be looking for when the print is done is, first of all. The quality of the surface area, the quality of these overhangs, and the quality of the print. Now, you also need to be looking for the quality of these bridging. Bridging is important because when you're printing over, let's say you have a design of a house and you want to print across to make doorways and windows and so on, that's called bridging. So, um, And if anyone has ever printed a Benchy, there's, there's lots of bridging in Benchy. So you want to check to make sure that these are flat, as flat as possible, flat and smooth. Um, they won't all be, but the, you find the best quality one that's out there, the best quality bridging. And another thing you need to look for is these cones that you see here between each layer. Two things you need to start doing with these. First of all, check for stringing between them. If there's very light cobwebby strings between the two, that's an important thing to note. And also, when you check the stringy and you found the one that gives you the best quality print, you can actually push on the more narrow one a little bit with your finger. Now don't push too hard, but push and see how easy it is to break. Because that's give you an idea of the bonding quality between the different layers. Now don't push too hard because it is PLA and PLA is brittle. With PETG you can give it a bit more of pressure when you're doing the testing. Now you run your code, you slice it, you save it out to file, you print it in your printer, you get the out, you let it, the print job run. When the print job is run and finished, take a part off the print bed and examine very closely. Look for the highest quality layer. When you find a layer with the highest quality, that is the temperature that is optimal for that material. And you put it into your slicer and save the settings for that material type. So you can give the, the name. I'll show you an example of how to do that. When you're in Cura and you have your settings done, 
you go to your profile line up here you click the, the down arrow you create a profile from current settings and you give it a name and it's good to call it the name of the material and it's good to call it in the, t uh, the material type being PLA so it could be Overture PLA or uh, IC3D PLA and it could be IC3 LA, IC3D PLA Clear, IC uh, PLA Blue, IC PLA, IC3D PLA Green or whatever it is. And that way then you have a profile and you can select, then when you go back to print this material later on, you choose that profile, bring your print job, whatever you're trying to print, onto your print bed and that will allow you to then print your device at its optimal settings or whatever the um, item you're trying to print at its optimal settings using predefined settings for your printer. Now as you change printers, as you notice in mine, I have mine, this is one that I'm printing at right now, I'm doing a lot of printing with PETG and I've done some for eSUN and I've done some for IC3D. This is the eSUN one and this uh, I've actually put in the name of my printer because it's the clear um, PETG inside my Ender 5 Plus and the material type and all my settings are predefined in there. Now, so you should do the same, that way then you have a, a point of reference to go back to and you can actually export these out as well. These settings can be exported out so you can actually leverage them. If you go to your manage your profiles, you can actually pick the one that you want and you can export it. And when you export out that profile, you can then import it. If you ever decide to uninstall Cura and change machines and reinstall Cura later on, you can actually re-import these profiles because they're customized profiles and the settings stay with you. And if you do decide to get a different printer, there are good starting points to use for a different printer. But again, you still have to go through all the process of doing your temp towers and so on and a new printer just to make sure that you get the optimal settings for your material on that specific printer. Now, once that is done and you've got your temp tower is done and you've chosen your setting, you found the optimal temperature, the next thing you can do and that you should do is a retraction setting tower. A retraction tower will actually help you optimize the retraction distance and speed and it means a couple of iterations but it helps you optimize your retraction distance and speed to maximize your retraction settings for that material type and for that printer. So these two are the two steps you do and I'll cover attraction towers at a later stage. But step one is cover your temperature tower. It's a must. You should never print without doing so uh, to make sure you have the right optimal settings for that material type on, your, on that one specific printer. Well, I hope you found this interesting um, and I hope you come back to see more recordings on optimal settings around 3D printing. I will also be doing other topics BS beside that because the name of the channel is Astroprint. So I will also be doing content that's around astronomy and even 3D printing for astronomy because I have done some of that also. So we'll go into the various aspects of astronomy and physics and so on. But I wanted to start off with 3D printing because there's a lot of demand out there. A lot of people getting 3D printers, starting out, don't know where to begin, get totally lost, struggle with temperature towers, don't know how to configure it. And I thought this would be a good starting point. And so please consider uh, donating to my Patreon page, which is a link below. And also consider clicking and subscribing to my Facebook page where you can actually follow along any future videos that we have coming out, add comments and queries. And I'll be happy to try and do what I can to help you to ensure that your 3D printing experience is as enjoyable as mine. Thank you and keep printing.